Hello, it's Becky Brown again for prayer time um, on Wednesdays. I'm happy to be joining you on this day um, leading up to Pentecost Sunday. Um, so we will have a brief devotion and then we'll share prayer concerns and have prayer over them. Um, so I invite you to join me in all of that. And anytime you have a prayer concern or wish to share prayer concerns with the church family, um, please do message me um, or email me and I would be happy to share those with others. So I want to begin with sharing um, a word from our scripture, um, our, from the scripture, actually one of the scripture lessons for this Sunday. It's from John chapter 14, um, and we've, we've done this passage recently, but I wanted to share it again with you. Um, it's John 14 verses 8 through 17, and then verses 25 through 27. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Do you not believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me? How can you say, Show us the Father? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am the Father, and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, then you will keep my commandments, and I will, seek, I will ask the Father, and he will give you an, another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not live, give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. You know, when you read this lectionary selection for this Sunday, it starts in a striking way. You know, Philip saying, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. You know, it's like just one more thing and we'll stop asking more questions. You know, if you'll just tell us this one answer or do this one thing for us, um, then our faith will be um, complete and we won't have to ask any more questions or have any doubts. You know, it's interesting, you know, Jesus' response is like, you know, have, have you not, have I not shown you enough? <laughs> have you not seen enough? Um, and so it's this understanding that we as human beings are always seeking more. Uh, our expectations of God are more and more and more. Um, even when we have been clearly shown again and again of the power of God, the, um, the way of grace, um, blessings upon blessings, you know, it's this, this yearning for more and this never, this hunger is never satisfied, or at least for some of us. And, um, you know, and then Jesus is, you know, says, well, I'm also going to send the Holy Spirit, you know, like we are all one, all of us are God, all of us um, are the, you know, the path to healing, to wholeness, to wellness, to salvation. And when you think about the Holy Spirit, um, especially uh, coming on Pentecost, um, we think about the Holy Spirit being, um, being a presence that is overwhelmingly a part of, um, of God's presence and evidence that God is living and breathing within us. So I think that there's some takeaways from the scripture today, the assurance of the presence of the Holy Spirit, the assurance of God's grace um, in our lives, and an understanding that when we evaluate all the things that are of God, and those moments where we doubt or we question or we say, you know, God, if you'll just show me this one thing, then I'll be fine. Um, a reminder to reflect and think about how many ways we have seen God in our lifetime. 
um, and how many times we have heard other people talk about the ways that they've seen God in their lives. It helps us with perspective. So um, as we go to prayer time today, I have several requests to discuss. Um, Kathy McNeil um, was in the hospital for a day and a half about, um, and uh, she missed Sunday morning, but she is fine. Um, there was a concern about a blood culture that ended up being fine after all, but I'm grateful that she was able to receive care and um, get the check on her bill of health um, for that. So she'll re re remain with us this week, which is great. Also, um, Willie Hubbard is, is doing well, and we pray for Betty Lou, who is at home with hospice care. We pray for um, Christine Schallenberger, who also is dealing with cancer and continuing her chemo, and she's doing very well. We pray for Katherine Hyatt, who's at home, and Katherine Young, who's at Silver Bluff and Arrowhead Cove, um, who are both with hospice care as well. We pray for um, several people on our cancer treatments list, and we continue to pray for them week after week, for we know that their struggle is, all, is unique, but also um, a very difficult one. Um, that journey continues for them. So we pray for Brenda Griswold, for Nancy Ray, Anne Dismuke, Stephen Hunter, Robert Clouser, Mary Arbaugh, Artura Suarez, Irene Noland, Scott, Mike, Colton Jenkins, Barbara Malden's sister, Luke Cullen, Ricky Pollard, Sherry Pittman, Joe, David Lawson, Lolly Hooper, Kyle Thompson, Jim Zimmerman, Mike Treadway, Luba, Cindy Hart, Ted Neighbor, and Christopher Holt. We also um, have several members who are turning 90 and above this week, um, so we celebrate their birthdays. Um, Bob Brannon is 95 today, so we celebrate his birthday. Also, Loy Lilly, who will turn 90 on Friday, June 3rd. Bill Lowry will turn 92 on Saturday, June 4th. And Mason Barrett will be 90 next week on June the 6th. Um, so we are grateful to have all of them um, in our midst. Um, and so we celebrate them. Um, feel free to give them a call or um, send them a card to celebrate their birthdays. Also, um, we pray for several members whose children are um, struggling with various, various issues and things in their lives with health problems. And so we remember Penny Poor's son, Blake, Heather Diane Haynes's daughter, Phil Hocott's daughter, Jennifer, and Donna Wilkins' son, Ross. We also pray for Ashley Calhoun's wife, Paula, who is homebound and bedridden. We pray for Elise McSwain's sister, Carol. Um, she shared that she's entering the final stages of her illness, and so we pray for her. We, Teresa Courtney asked for prayers for her grandson, Cameron, who has spinal muscular atrophy. Also, um, Jody Wijay Rikorama asked for prayers for Sophia's broken leg and her rehab. Carol Platt is recovering, continues to recover well from her foot and ankle injuries. We pray for her. It's a long journey ahead for her. Nancy Hood shares that her son is doing better, but we continued prayers for him as he recovers from his recent hospitalization. We pray for ben Brenda Russell's brother, Buddy Talbert, who has macular degeneration and is receiving some treatments for that and his healing. We pray for Nona, Nona Porlos, who's, who is recovering from her knee surgery. Lanier Bayless is recovering well from major surgery at Mayo Clinic, and so she is resting this week and will have a subsequent surgery next week. So we pray for her continued healing. Velma Fortner is out of the hospital and healing after her surgery, but prayers that she is doing okay. George Shepard is um, his brother, uh, John's brain surgery went well, so we, he continues to recover, so we pray for them. Also, Dorothy Johnson, who is Dorothy Wilson's mother, was hospitalized last week, um, and she's doing a little bit better and is home now, but needs continued healing prayer. Chip Killian is at Silver Bluff recovering this week, so we pray for him. And Jake Lindsay, the seventh grader we've been praying for, has who's been dealing with long COVID. Um, he's had additional worrisome symptoms, and he's going to have a brain scan this week, so we pray for him and his family. We also lift up Ellen, which is Bren McNeil's sister, who is struggling with tolerating her chemo. 
and Cheryl Villamain, who's home back in North Carolina, um, in a wheelchair and homebound, and we'll follow up with her surgeon on June 21st in Florida, and we're hoping that that is good news for um, increased mobility for her. And we lift up Corinne Faircloth's cousin's son-in-law, um, who is in the Army and overseas and has a leg injury. Um, and he's had several, a couple of surgeries and is doing well, but prayers for his healing. Those are all the concerns that I am um, privy to mention today, but I know there are others out there that um, people have concern for, and so we will lift them up in a space in our prayer for those um, unutterable requests. So let's pray. Holy God, we ask for your healing touch today and for the power of the wave of your Holy Spirit within us. God, forgive us for the times in which we doubt you. Forgive us for the times when we ask you for more. Help us to remember all those moments along the way in our life and in the lives of the ones that we love and know about. Reminders of the evidence of your grace, the evidence of your providence, the evidence of your healing, the evidence of your power. So God, we ask that you would continue to guide us as your people to seek you and to rely on the leaning of your Holy Spirit. God, we're grateful for the time in which you continue to share with us and reveal your glory. Help us to answer your call. God, today as we consider all of the concerns we've mentioned, there are many who are struggling, struggling with illnesses that continue for new diagnoses that are confusing, for healing from difficult surgeries that continue for weeks and weeks, for mental health issues that continue to resurface and we have trouble dealing with, and for all of those that we are concerned about that we are unable to mention aloud. God, we know that you are God who hears every one of our prayers and knows the depths of our inner being. Help us to trust in your grace, and may your Holy Spirit issue us peace. In the name of Christ that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's a pleasure being with you today, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care and God bless.